Good evening, everyone, and thanks for stopping by to hang out with me. Um, I've been talking a lot about this book, The Secrets of Lost Stones by Melissa Payne, and have been meaning to get a review out on my blog, my website, on Amazon, on Goodreads, everywhere. But somebody decided it was a good idea to double up on classes this term. So I really haven't had the time. Luckily, one of my assignments is to do a video blog. So here we are. I decided to knock two birds out with one stone. So um, there are a lot of aspects of books that, like aside from the story, that a lot of people don't know. So being an author myself, I like to share a little bit of the backstory, um, you know, behind the book. So first I want to tell you um, how I came to own this book. Um, it all started while I was shopping on Amazon, but it didn't end there because I didn't even buy the book, but I just kept seeing this gorgeous cover all over Amazon. I didn't click on it. I tell you, my to be read list is insane. I have a pile of books just out of sight of the camera. Um, more perspective, I, in the last six months, have bought four full-size bookshelves. Like, I might have a problem. Okay, so I didn't buy this book on Amazon, um, didn't look at the blurb, I mostly go on there to look at cute dresses. Uh, so in September, I taught a marketing class to authors and there were quite a few very talented authors in this class and everyone had a very interesting premise behind their book, but in the very back of the room I had two Melissas and one of those Melissas was Melissa Payne. So, um, she was very warm, very welcoming, very interactive in the class, just like everyone else. Um, but throughout the weekend, like we talked quite a bit about being a mom and writing and our, and our sh short journey. We, um, we've both probably been, been, uh, published about the same amount of time. Um, but then it was Friday night and I was signing books at a group signing and I stand because my last name starts with an A. I'm like the first one signing books next to the cash register. So as people would come by, I'm like, I keep seeing this cover. I keep seeing this cover. And finally, I, I, one of my friends stopped by and I grabbed it and I just looked at it and it said, Melissa Payne. And this woman had bought my book already. So here I go. And I went and I bought her book and we both sold out of books that night and it was great. So now she has my book, I have her book, and when it came time to read it, I never put it down. It was so good. So that's how I met Melissa. That's how I came to own the book. Um, but now let me tell you a little bit more about her as a person. I'll read her bio. I'm reading it, so bear with me just a moment. Um, for as long as she can remember, Melissa Payne has been telling stories in one form or another, from high school newspaper articles to graduate theses to blogging about marriage and motherhood. But she first learned real the real importance of storytelling when she worked for a residential day treatment center for abused and neglected children. There she wrote speeches and letters to raise funds for children. The truth in those stories was piercing and painful and written to invoke in the reader a call to action, to give, to help, to support. I lost my spot. Melissa's love for writing sh and sharing stories in all forms has, ende has endured. She lives in the foothills of the Rocky Mountains with her husband and three children, a friendly mutt and a very loud cat and the occasional bear. Um, the Secrets of Lost Stones is her first full-length novel. So that's super exciting. Um, it wasn't, what, February that I put out my first novel, or December of last year. So, yeah, I totally, like, we're, we're definitely in the trenches together, Melissa. <laughs> so she was, uh, like I said, she's a very warm person, very positive person, and I feel honored that she even took my class. Um, so this book is published through Amazon, not, I'm sorry, by Amazon, not through Amazon. Um, so it's published through one of Amazon's publishing imprints, uh, Lake Union. And uh, let's see. And the reason why, the reason why I saw so much of this book on Amazon is because it was an Amazon First Reads, which is a program specifically for um, Amazon published authors where um kind of like an advanced reader program that i do 
Um, but of course it's Amazon, so they get a lot more visibility. I never even knew Amazon had publishing houses. Um, so I was very excited. I knew that, that, uh, they had a self publishing, but I didn't know they had traditional publishing houses. So finally, let's talk about the story, the story behind the secrets of the lost stones. Um, this is the back cover blurb again, so I'm going to read a little. Um, a soul-stirring novel about the bonds between mother and child and the redemption that comes with facing the past and letting it go. 32-year-old Jess Abbott has lost everything, her job, her apartment, and most heart-wrenching, her eight-year-old son, Chance, to a tragic accident. Haunted by memories and grief, Jess packs what's left and heads for a small mountain town of Pine Lake, where she takes a position as a caregiver to an eccentric old lady. A rumored clairvoyant, Lucy is strange but welcoming, and immediately in, into its Jess as a loose end in need of closure. But Jess isn't the only guest in Lucy's large Victorian home. There's also Star, a teenage runaway with a secret too painful to share, and the little boy with heart-shaped stones who comes with hope for reconciliation and warning. Soon Jess learns that she's not the only lost soul running from ghosts of her past. She and Star have been brought together for a reason, to be saved by the very thing that destroyed them both. So as a mom, I hate, hate, hate stories where a baby gets hurt. I can't stand it. But Melissa approaches this topic with gentleness and care. So writing about losing a child as a mother must have been difficult, but translating such a tender story into something that keeps me turning pages is talent. Okay. Um, I think the need to know what happened and why it happened is really what made me like suspend my empathetic reaction to the topic of wanting to save everyone from everything. Um, I might put a trigger warning on this book um, for child loss, but I think when you're reading, you're able to move through um, the character's healing process as well. So there is child loss, but it's very delicately written. Um, oh, this is, <laughs> we're into my review now. I'm now reviewing the book. So T, the teenager star, um, is very relatable and realistic. So as an adult, her choices got on my nerves. Um, but they're supposed to because she's a teenage girl. Um, and again, like my need, my, my desire to save everyone from everything. This character was no exception. I loved star like annoying little sister. I really did. So, um, yeah, she'd been through a lot. Um, so you give her a little grace, but at the same time, you're like, you're, why are you doing that? It makes no sense. Self-sabotage like any troubled teen. Um, so Lucy is the old lady. So Lucy is, is where the story holds most of its intrigue. Uh, all these characters are attached to one string and Lucy uses it to pull them all together. Uh, and, and it, you heard they, she calls it a loose end. So imagine a needle and thread and Lucy somehow knows who to stitch together. So she goes out and makes contact with all these people, um, that, and that she's led to do so. So this initial contact with everyone is like a single stitch in each person. And then she goes home and she pulls the string, the, the loose end, bringing all these key players into the story together with the goal <clears throat> of tying off the loose end. And, the, and then in the end, like solve all the problems um, that are linked together. So it's seriously impossible to put this book down. There was just the right amount of foreshadowing so that you could guess where the strings connected and how, but not too much where you figured out the entire connection before it was revealed in the end. Um, so highly recommend this book. If you haven't noticed already, 
I five starred this book. Um, go out and buy it. It is it is delicious. It is good. It will keep you turning the pages. You can purchase this book on Amazon, on Barnes and Noble, on Kindle. Uh, let's see. You can also pick it up at Target. If you shop at Target, you could pick up this book. Um, Christmas is right around the corner, and you know somebody who enjoys a cozy read with a happy ending. That's not a spoiler. It's just not a sad. It's a sad story, but it has a nice cozy ending. Okay. Lastly, and I say this every single time, please, if you read this book and you love it, let Melissa know. Um, please go out and review it. So reviewing books, like this is our bread and butter. This is how um, we get traction in the literary industry. This is um, even, even if they're not good reviews, like the more reviews, the better. So three, four, five stars. Um, those are all, those are all decent reviews. Um, it can be simple. It could be elaborate. It could be a video like this. It doesn't matter. Go out and review the book. Review all the books. All right. Well, it's almost time to wrap up. And I say almost, but we have like 10 more minutes. So bear with me. Um, I haven't seen you guys in a while. So I just want to give you an update on all that's happening in my world. Um, the the Diazem series has got a makeover, as you can see behind me. Um, let's see what else. This started with Apparent Power. So Apparent Power had um, the light bulb on the cover and now has a full dystopian genre cover and it's gorgeous and I love it. Um, the gentleman named Christian in the Philippines is an artist and um, he he did these. So thank you, Christian. Um, and then I had the cover reveal for Shifting Power. So shifting power is very cohesive. Looks just like the first one with a little bit of difference. So you know it's a different book. Um, and next, Reactants, we'll get a new cover too. And then Reactants, I know Reactants came out before Apparent Power, but I'm now incorporating it into the series. So Apparent Power's first, Reactants is now the second book, and then Shifting Power will be the third book. The fourth book, which I have renamed, are you ready? Resistance, of course. It only makes sense. So we have Apparent Power, Reactance, Shifting Power, Resistance, Taking Power, we're done. So this entire series will wrap up November of next year. You'll have all five books out and available. I'll start selling them in packs. They'll come out in, in hardback. It'll be great, okay? So Shifting Power hits stores November 5th. You can pre-order it on Amazon now or reserve your copy of Barnes & Noble. Um, this is book three, again, in the series. If you have not read Reactants, you are going to be lost come book four and book five. So get on Reactants. Um, so almost there. Almost done. Um, I do want to let you know where you can find me um, and my signings. So I have about eight signings coming up between now and January. If you're local to Colorado, um, I'm not taking any out-of-state signings right now. Um, but, but you can find me at the um, North Commerce City Mops Craft Fair. So Moms of Preschoolers Craft Fair in uh, North Commerce City on November 2nd. On the 9th, I'll be at the hotel made famous by the Stephen King novel, The Shining. I'll be signing books at the Stanley Hotel in Estes Park, Colorado from noon to 9, noon to 8 um, on November 9th. Let's see. I have... I'm signing five different Barnes and Nobles this year, and you can check out on my website, um, daishamarnold.com backslash events. Um, so I'll be in Colorado Springs at the science fiction convention. I'll be on a million panels, and it'll be great. Um, I'll be doing that in January, and then the following weekend, I'll be at the Landmark Academy Minicon. Um, so, and that is one day only. 
Lastly, if you do not hear from me on social media after the launch of Shifting Power, it is because November is National Novel Writing Month. This means that I will have my head down writing 50,000 words into a novel in a month. Now, if you remember back in August, I sat down and wrote 25,000 words in four days. So I think, I think that November is going to be a, a success. Uh, my, my work in progress is going to be the last book in this series. And then once that is done, then I will move on to, um, a brand new story that's outside of the Diazam world. So that's all I have finally. Um, but it feels good to be in front of a camera again. And I know it's been a while since I've done a video, but I do appreciate that, uh, you guys sat here and hung out with me. And thank you for following my career and cheering me on and bringing me up when I feel like crap and I wonder what I'm doing here to begin with. So, um, yeah, you guys have a great weekend and I'll talk to you soon.